here now is Lester Munson, co-head of the international practice at BGR Group. It's a government relations firm in Washington, D.C. Uh, thank you for being with us. Does the war get tougher the longer it goes on? Uh, it depends on what you mean by war. I think the political situation for uh, supporters of Israel will get more difficult and more complicated. Uh, it will also get more uh, difficult for Arab leaders in the region who are under some pressure from their populations to be more on the side of Hamas and the Palestinians. They, they're not really interested in doing that. They can't say that in public, but the longer this goes on, the more pressure there will be in particular on uh, leaders in the Middle East to maybe take a different tack. And how does Israel and also the U.S. as its ally combat that and respond? Well, I think part of it's information and Israel needs to make clear what it is doing and why it is doing it. Uh, these, these moves towards hospitals are because Hamas military elements are located underneath the hospital. So, it's, so Israel is not targeting hospitals per se. It is going after the leadership and infrastructure of Hamas, which are located in those in those very specific areas. It needs to communicate that. It needs to show the world that. Frankly, President Biden and his team need to do that as well. At the same time, the sooner this uh, phase of the conflict is over, frankly, I think the better it will be for everyone. Robert was talking a moment ago about the threat from the Houthis in, in that region, from Hezbollah in Lebanon. The U.S. and Israeli forces have carried out some separate airstrikes targeting Iranian-backed groups in Syria. How much coordination is there right now between the United States and Israel as it focuses on some of these threats from different groups in the north? That, that coordination is significant. It's been going on for a long time. Let's, let's be clear, the Houthis and Hezbollah are acting on behalf of Iran. These are Iranian proxies acting against Israel at Iran's behest. They're effectively um, you know, acting for, for Tehran in this instance. The U.S. Uh, is responding a little bit. There have been 40 attacks against U.S. facilities in the region in the last three weeks or so. The U.S. has only responded twice. So we respond about 5% of the time to these attacks from Iran and Iranian proxies. That's probably not sufficient to stop them. The U.S. needs to have a more robust response. I think this is something the White House is aware of. They haven't taken that step yet, but I think that's imminent. And why not? Why don't you think we've seen more of a response? So the president's in a difficult spot politically on his own, of course. There's a significant number of Americans, uh, particularly younger Americans and those on the left side of the spectrum that are less likely to support Israel and more likely to support uh, the Palestinians in this case. And I think the, the White House is being a little too mindful of that right now. And their response may not be in the best interest of the United States. They need to be a little more bold here, frankly. Right. And it could get much worse before it gets better. I mean, look at this. Syrian President Bashir al-Assad is going to be heading to Saudi Arabia for an emergency summit. The goal is to stop the war with Gaza. It's my understanding some leaders from Iran will be there as well. What will you be watching to come from this gathering? Well, it'll be interesting to watch the body language uh, and what is said in public. Of course, frankly, the conversations behind the scenes will be very different. Saudi Arabia is not at all interested in this conflict expanding. I suspect Assad would be happy to see uh, more action in Syria as a result of the conflict in Gaza. So while there's going to be some kind of public unanimity among these Arab leaders and perhaps with the Iranians as well. Behind the scenes, there are huge differences between their interests. Saudi Arabia, of course, uh, is is uh, basically at war with the Houthis, has been for a long time. So so there's, there's real delta between uh, where Assad is, where the Iranians are and the Saudis are. It's going to be hard to discern that in public, but but we need to look for it. And finally, the implications of this meeting between President Biden and Xi Jinping next week as it relates to what we're seeing in Israel. Well, it's uh, it, it, the, the meeting between President Xi and President Biden presumably is about many more things than just the Middle East. The Middle East does make it more of a crisis. China has been kind of tilting towards the Palestinians, although not in any particularly overt way, but more in more subtle ways. 
I think President uh, Biden has his hands full here. He needs to take a tough line with Xi Jinping on a number of fronts. Uh, the business community is very concerned in Beijing. China has been arresting American uh, businessmen. Also, Chinese business people are disappearing. The economy is very much uh, on the edge in China right now. So Xi Jinping's backed into a corner. President Biden needs needs to be very artful here, but also very tough with Xi Jinping. There's a lot. There's a lot on the line. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.